Working alone in his study, Darwin had taken more than 20 years developing his theory on the origin of species. Because it went against religious teaching, he knew it was bound to offend many people, and he had held back from putting it into print. But then he learned something which forced him to act. He got a letter from Alfred Russell Wallace, a young naturalist, in which Wallace laid out the same theory, word for word almost, and Darwin was flabbergasted, staggered. Uh, can't really think why, because you'd think he'd have been worried about being scooped, but anyway, Wallace thought of it, and Darwin was then galvanised into action. But it was Wallace who really stimulated him to get moving and write The Origin of Species. But Darwin still had one major hurdle ahead. Although scientists were beginning to accept the idea that species had evolved, they found it much harder to believe that the human race could have been created by the same evolutionary forces as animals and plants. Humans were special, they protested. Darwin was convinced this was a load of nonsense. He said people were just animals, particularly they behaved like apes. Now, in 1838, there appeared at London Zoo a young female orangutan called Jenny. A bit like this chap, he's called Bo. And Darwin went to see her and he was absolutely fascinated. He said that when the keeper withheld an apple, Jenny lay on her back and screamed and kicked. And when, when the keeper gave it to her, she jumped into an armchair and ate it with a huge smile on her face. In fact, he spent quite a lot of time comparing the facial expressions and behaviour of his own children with those of the chimps in the zoo. He was convinced there must be some common ancestry, but he needed proof. At the time, there was no evidence which clearly showed an evolutionary link between humans and apes. Fossils of early human-like creatures only came to light many years later. But when he wrote his next book, The Descent of Man, Darwin was confident that the missing evidence would eventually be discovered. He realised, of course, that this would be extremely controversial. But the fossil evidence already suggested that other species had changed through time and had evolved. So, I think he became confident that the same, you know, man was not going to be an exception. And he actually said in The Descent of Man that in looking for our place of origin, we should look where our closest relatives live. And that's where the gorilla and chimpanzee live. And therefore he actually said in The Descent that Africa was the most probable place of our origins. So he made a prediction? He did, he made a specific prediction that, that most likely it would be Africa that would have the fossil evidence of our evolution when people looked for it but it was at least another 50 years before any of that evidence began to turn up. But it did turn up? It did, it started to turn up, and now we know, of course, that indeed, the whole first half of human evolution occurred only in Africa. That's where our original ancestry was. Darwin's theory outraged the church, and he was satirised in the press. But his theory survived because it fitted the facts better than any other explanation of how species develop and change. But it was going to be another 100 years before people find out how we actually pass on genetic characteristics from one generation to another. <laughs>